Okay, so good Erev Erev Shabbos. We are uh, in Parshas Vayishlach this week. The journey of Yaakov back to Eretz Yisrael. Now, the journey of Yaakov back to Eretz Yisrael is so symbolic of Yaakov's entire life, but it's also symbolic of our entire life. And that's really what I want to focus on today. Yaakov's life is full of challenges, of fights. He's fighting with his brother. He's already in his mother's womb. He's fighting with uh, Esau. And then he's fighting over the firstborn rights. And then he's getting the brachos. And then he's fighting with Lavan. And he has some uh, arguments with his wife, with his wife, his wives, because of all of the you know, the, the trickery that happened over there, he comes back to Eretz Israel and on his final journey, he has another fight. And that's the fight with the Tsar of e. First, he's preparing to fight Ace of himself. And then he has the fight with the Tsar of Esav, with the angel, when he goes back for the Pachim Ketanim. And then finally, he meets Ace of, he comes into Eretz Israel. The fighting doesn't stop or the, the difficulties don't stop he, with his children and Dina and the brothers and then Yosef and this. And that's why when he goes up to, to Paro, he says, they're, they're short and they're difficult. It was a life full of difficulty. Yaakov, who is the Bechir Shababos, he is the prize of all of the forefathers. We find that his life is full of difficulties. Why is it that Yaakov's life specifically is filled with difficulties? And yet we find that we are called the children of Yaakov because Yaakov in this week's parasha gets his name Israel. Because you have, uh, were able to fight and to overcome gods, kivyachol, and, and, uh, and people, and you became triumphant. Therefore, the word sar is Israel. We discussed earlier in the week the name Israel, and we're called Bnei Israel. So his life is full of difficulties. We're called his children. And I believe there's something very profound over here, and that's what I want to focus on today, is that our life will be filled of challenges. The story of the Jewish people, communal and personal, will be filled with challenges. Hardships, hardships sometimes already from childbirth, all the way through. Hardships in families, hardships in Parnassah, hardships in being in Gullis, hardships on our journey back there to Israel when we're, we're, you know, just when can I get back there to Israel? When can I be there? When can I build a home there? When can I do it? Will I ever be able to make that, that journey there? All of those difficulties that Yaakov endured are the difficulties that we endure today. Are the difficulties of the Jewish people, are the difficulties of the Bnei Yaakov, of the Bnei Yisrael, but yet he's given the name of Yisrael, that you will become triumphant, that you will overcome, that you will thrive, you will not just survive, but you will thrive and you will triumph at the end. And what I want to focus on is how do we do it? How do we come out on top? Because we find in this week's parsha the secret of coming out on top of all of our challenges. Yaakov Avinu gets ready to fight with Esau. Perhaps that symbolizes the ultimate fight, the ultimate battle. And he's coming to fight with Esau. He gets ready. How does he get ready? The three things that Yaakov Avinu does are the three things that we need to do in order to become ready. What are those three things? The three things that Yaakov Avinu does is uh, he gets ready for milchama, he prays, and he sends gifts. Those are the three things that Yaakov Avinu does. Now, each one of those things teach us something different, teach us about who it is we're battling, and it teaches us about you know, how to overcome whatever it is we're, ba- we're, we're battling. So first of all, the battle against Esau is not just a battle against somebody else who's outside of us. We know that the milchama, the ultimate milchama, is the milchama of the Yetzer. As it's brought down, Rabbeinu Yonah, people are coming back from the milchama, and the Chacham tells them, oh, you think that you have, you have won, that you're victorious? Now the real milchama starts. Now the real challenge starts. The real challenge, by the way, this is so profound and so important for our lives. The real challenge is never with somebody outside of us. Our most difficult challenges in life 
are never outside of us. The most difficult challenges are us with ourselves. It might be caused because of somebody who's outside of us. It might have been triggered because somebody said something to me. But then my battle is with myself. How am I reacting to that person? How am I taking what that person said? Am I taking it personally? Or am I removing myself from it? Am I reacting with my Yetzer or am I controlling my Yetzer? It's always that inner balance. It might have been triggered by other things because I got fired, because I couldn't make it, because I didn't make it, because I won, because I lost, because whatever it might be. But really the battle is always inside. And that's what Yaakov Avinu here is teaching us in these three things. And this is the, what I want to focus on. Number one, let's start with the tefillah. Even though he, he really he first starts with the doron, he sends out a gift. And then he stands up for tefillah and then he gets ready for milchama. But let's start with the tefillah. The tefillah, he says, Hatsileni na miyad achim miyad Esav. Save me from my brother, from Esav. And why does he say, save me from my brother, from Esav? His brother is Esav. So Hatsileni na miyad achi. You're already asking, save me from Esav. Or Hatsileni Nami Ad Esav, save me from, that's his brother. Why does he need to say it in Tula Shonos, save me from my brother, from Esav? There's something very profound over here. The Mepharshim explained, Rashi already points this out. Hatsileni Nami Ad Achi, save me whether he's coming as my brother or whether he's coming as Esav Harasha. Because when we're confronting other people, there's two dangers out there. There is the danger of Esav who wants to destroy us, who wants to kill us, who wants to harm us. And then there is the danger of Achi, of the one who's coming as my friend. He is, let's be, fr- we're together. Let's connect. We're in a global society, in a global economy. We could all be friends. We could all be brothers. And we could all be alike because we're all humans. At the end of the day, that's what matters. We're human beings. And therefore, we have to respect each other, which is all true. But then does that mean that I start living like him? Or is he respecting me as a human being with my lifestyle? There's, an, there's the Yetzer Hara of Achi, of my brother. And what does Yaakov Avinu ask for first? Hatsileni na miyad Achi, miyad Esav. Save me from my brother, save me from Esav. He was more worried about the Achi, about the, about the, the temptations the Yetzir Hara, the desires that come in the form of, we're all the same. Let's enjoy this together. And it's not just the outside forces again, it's, it's inside. We, there's two Yetzir Haras. There's the Klippa of Esav and there's the Klippa of Achi. The Klippa of Esav is the Yetzir Hara that comes in the form of an Aveira. A desire to take a little bit of money that's not mine. To look at something inappropriate online to say something inappropriate to somebody else. Those are all, we know that there is an Aveira, but there's a desire for it. I want to eat this. It's not real Heksher. It is Heksher. It's not Kosh. I, but I'm, I, I'm really hungry. Okay, I, I could do it. That's Esav. But there's another Yetzirah inside of us, excuse me, which is the Yetzirah of Achi, which is my brother, which is worse because that is the Yetzirah that is dressed up as my brother. He's a tzaddik. You have to do this. This is l'shem shamayim. This is a mitzvah to go put down that other person. You have to do it. It's a mitzvah. People get all caught up with that Yetzir Hara sometimes that dresses up as a mitzvah. And that is perhaps the most difficult Yetzir Hara because we don't even know that we're doing an Avera. We're standing up for something. We're standing up for a value that we believe in. But the way we do it is in a way that is putting down other people. The way we do it is we don't realize that we might be doing an Avera along the way. We think that the end justifies the means, but it's not true. Because in certain cases, the way you got there, if it was a road of Avera, so then was it all worth it? That's why Yaakov Avinu Davins for Hatsileni Nami Ad Achim Ad Esav, save me from my brother, save me from Esav. We understand from this. Who is our enemy? Our enemy outside of us could be an enemy of Esau and an enemy of my brother, but even our enemy inside of us could be an enemy of a Yetzirah to do an Avera, which I know is an Avera, but also a Yetzirah that I think I'm doing a mitzvah. But really, I'm doing an Avera. That's the first thing. And by the way, 
Yaakov says, Ki are anochi. He's scared, and Yaakov says it twice. Why is he scared? Rashi again also over there says, this is already more no get to the milchama. When Yaakov Avinu davens for the milchama, so he needs to get ready. He needs to get ready to fight against Achi and against Esav, against both of those two things. So when we go to the milchama, that's what it says, betachbulos tase milchama. You have to come up with different etzas, with different ideas of how to do milchama. There is milchama when you're fighting against the Yetzirah that is outside of you, when you're fighting against Esav that is trying to kill you. There's the milchama, the actual real battle of standing up for what you believe in. There's the milchama, though, against the Achi, the one who's coming to, to come as, as a friend. And you have to know, betachbulos tase milchama. We all know that the Yetzirah is in a constant war with us. So we need to come up with ideas. We need to come up with tricks how to beat him in his own game, whether it's the Yetzir Hara of Avodah Zarah, of, of Gilu Erais, so of Shri Chuzdamim, and everything that trickles down from there, or whether it's the Yetzir Hara of doing a mitzvah that I think I'm being a tzaddik, but really, when somebody points out to me, I realize that this is not Sidkus. This is my, my own Yetzir Hara that is pushing me to do this. So Yaakov Inu is scared of the Milchama. And he says, Ki, ki are anochi, I'm scared. And Rashi brings down that he's scared times two. Why is he scared times two? I'm scared that he will kill me, but I'm even more scared that I will kill him and the effects that that will have on me. I, I, I travel every year. I've shared this with you. I travel every year with a group of, uh, of soldiers, of young Israeli students that are in the army, right after the army. And, and it's, again, it's a leadership program that they... We bring them through an accelerator and they're thinking about different creative ideas like only Israelis know how to come up with these startups of how can we connect world Jewry to Israel, to Jewish identity, to Jewish learning. And one of the part of the mission is for them to come to New York and to meet different communities, businessmen, young professionals, students. We meet, we go to Columbia, we, sometimes NYU, different universities, and they, and they get a chance to meet you know, what American life is like and sort of to like to see if their ideas are good ideas, to learn what more of the challenges, what they are, and then to come up with ideas from there. And a lot of times discussion about the army comes out. And what's fascinating to many Jews is, and, and this is really what this, you know, the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, is that it's an army of defense to defend the Jewish people. And some of the conversations, and, and we took them once into a college campus speech, and they saw the anti-Israel people coming in and protesting in the middle. Oh, apartheid, and, and, and they kill it. And it was, it was like a big culture shock for them, for Israelis, to be on campus and to experience it. We couldn't have planned it, and we didn't. But they came to see a speech, and then it's like they, they, they were right there in the middle of the interaction. And a lot of people, they come and they say, oh, the Jewish people and how they run their army. And a big part of the conversation that came out of them was this, that as Jews, we're willing to fight for what we believe in. We're willing to fight and to defend the Jewish people. But we are scared. We're scared, first of all, that we might lose and that maybe people in the family will get killed. And that's why Yaakov Avinu splits the camp into two so that maybe other people can could, could run away and can survive. You always have to be prepared for battle, a realistic battle that people might die. But as Rashi says, he was also scared that he might kill Asa. As Jews, we're scared to go into battle just as much as we're scared to get killed. We're scared that we might kill somebody and that might affect us. And it might taint us. We, we need to do it to defend ourselves and we're willing to do it. But we never lose track of our values. We never lose track of what it means to go out to war. And therefore we're petrified of killing somebody just as much as we are of getting killed. And that's why it's called the Israel Defense Force because it's not an attacking army, it's a defensive army to make sure that we can live here so that we can learn Torah here, so that we can grow here. We can create our, our own identity here and to, to live as the Jewish people, the children of Hashem in his own land in Eretz Israel. So that's the milchama. There's the davening, understanding who it is we're facing. And now you have to prepare for battle. And preparing for battle means in a physical sense and the fear of getting killed and the fear of 
killing somebody else, but it's also in the spiritual sense. When you're getting out for battle, you have to do betach bulos, tas, and mochama. You have to have different ways of how to do it. When the Yetzir Hara attacks, so you have a Yetzir Hara to waste time on the internet. You have the Yetzir Hara to look at inappropriate things. So what are you going to do? You're just going to say, oh, I'm not going to do it, but it happens all the time. So then how do you do it? You got to come up with an Yetzir. You have to have, you have to put a filter in the house. It's Pashit. If you're a Jew, you have to put, if you're a human being that cares about values and society, you have to put a filter in the house because the things that are on there don't care about values and about humanity and about respect for human beings. They care about, you know, materializing everything. And then it, and, and it feeds on our Yetzir Haro, which we have human habits and human, human tendencies. And therefore we have to do betach bulot tas and milchama. And if you have internet in the home in year 2021, 2020, entering 2021, and you don't have a filter at home, it's just not a person who has the right values and not the person who has the right sensitivities because he might at this point say, oh, I passed it. It's not no gad to me. I'm too old for this. But at the end of the day, who knows, right? You, it doesn't matter what age and at what stage. And therefore, it's important to set that. To, you have to preempt the milchama. That's what it means, against ourselves. The milchama is against myself. I know what is right. I know what I want to do. But then there are moments where I could slip. So instead of slipping, you have to do a tachbulos. So you have to do a milchama. You have to come prepared. You have a preemptive strike that does not allow for the Yetzir Hara to come and attack me. If I'm trying to watch my weight and to eat healthy, so then I can't bring that type of food into the house. It's a preemptive strike. Because if I open the fridge and I see it there, I'm going to end up doing it. I'm going to end up eating the food that's not healthy. And the same is true, by the way, if I, you know, if I open up my computer and there's something inappropriate, so just like I might eat the cheesecake, even though I know it's not good for me, I might end up watching that's not good for me. It's the same exact thing. And therefore, we need to be one step ahead, everyone, wherever he's at, whatever the Yetzir Hara is. And we all have our different challenges and our different struggles. And it could be struggles in mitzvos. I daven. I don't have any Yetzir Hara. I don't watch anything inappropriate. I eat healthy. I use my time wisely. I learn Torah. But even within our mitzvot, we have our, our struggles there. So am I falling asleep in the middle of Shir? Am I really learning um, without batala? Am I da- do I have con- concentration in my tefillah, the whole tefillah? Do I have concentration in the first brach of Shemona Esrei and the first pasach of Kriya Shema? Am I able to do that or do I miss that out on that also? Right? So in every single aspect, we need to come up with the chbulos, ta'as, and muhammad. I'll share with you this was unbelievable. This actually was perhaps, uh, it, we only did this for a month. So I would say it was the month of, of my best fila, my best fila. This was a tachbulos that I learned from my Rebbe, Rav Noach Weinberg, when I joined Eisha Torah, the Rosh Hashiva of Eisha Torah. So he was known around the world, Kiruv, and explaining relevant Judaism. But I'll share with you, besides a lot of the Torah that I learned from him and how to make Torah very practical and very real, I remember we were sitting there, we were a Chabura, a Kolal, a Vreichim, all guys from the Mir Yeshiva, top guys. And we sat, we had a Vad with him once a week. We sat with the Rosh Hashiva. Rav Noach Weimer gives us a whole spiel about, about tefillah and how you can explain tefillah. Tefillah is not for us. It's, it's not for our Kodesh Baruch it's really for us. And how to do it and how to explain. At a certain point when he was finished, we said, Rebbe, this is great. And we've learned a lot of Sparm about tefillah. We know tefillah. And this is a, an amazing way to explain it. But tachlis, practical. We're, we're avrechim. We're in our late 20s. Some of us, were early 30s already. We're having difficulty having kavana and all the Shemona Esrei. How do you do it? How do you, how do you have kavana for Shemona Esrei? So he said, I know what you guys need. You need betachbulos tasa milchama. You have to come prepared for war. What does that mean? He said, of course, we all want to have kavana, but our mind takes us in, in different directions. You know what, what's going to have you have kavana? He took out a 10 shekel coin. He said, it's going to be this 10 shekel is going to make you have kavana. What did he say? He said, everyone turn to the guy on your right. He becomes your chavusa. Every day,